What's up, buds? Fly High FPV. And several pilots asked me to tell them a little bit more about the Hoda T6 charger. So I'm going to give you a bit of a walkthrough, show you the features, show you how I set it up, and uh, show you its capabilities. This thing is pretty awesome. It's a $37 pocket charger from Hoda. It does full 6S, and you can power it via DC XC60 or via USB-C power delivery. Uh, they recommend a 90 watt uh, power delivery charger. I've got a 65 watt one here that works pretty darn well and uh, is good enough to get the packs charged. So without further ado, let's power this thing up. I'm just gonna use a regular battery here. You could use the Stay High Pack, uh, something big like that will charge a lot of batteries. But as soon as you fire it up, you see the display. And this is very similar to all the other Hoda chargers. If you've seen a D6 Pro or an F6 or any of the Hoda stuff, the firmware is all very, very similar. Uh, first thing I like to do is go right into the menus. You long, there's, On the top here, you've got three buttons. The center is the enter, and then you've got left and right. So um, let's see, this is the charge settings. We want to go back. I'm going to long press this menu button go into the uh, charger settings. And I like to go straight down to system parameters. And uh, first thing I have to do is turn the volume off. The beeping drives me crazy. Uh, now that it's silent, the next thing I like to always do is turn on continuous charging mode. That means that when you finish charging a pack, if you take another pack and you plug it in, if it's the same voltage, it'll just go ahead and kick on and start automatically charging on the same settings as you've been using. Um, other useful stuff here is the minimum input voltage. You can change this based on what your power source is. But for example, if you're using the Stay High Pack, this is a 6S battery, but because it's Lion, it can go all the way down to 16 volts. So the minimum voltage for this battery is 16 volts. So if I was gonna charge from that, then I would change it right here, go to 16 volts. And that way it won't over discharge my source battery. Uh, when it gets down to 16 volts, it's going to stop. Uh, that way it won't keep pulling on this and crush this battery. It'll just allow it to keep going uh, the whole time. And stop. Keeps the lights on so you can still see where you're at. But it'll stop the charge cycle automatically. Um, that's really about it. Oh, you can go in here and put your name on the device. Uh, I'm not too worried about that. Uh, but if your friends all have these, then that would be super useful. Calibration, I would just leave alone. Just let this thing roll. I've never had one that wasn't calibrated properly from the factory. Um, and I don't have any new firmwares for this yet. Uh, Hoda does work with me, though, and they're usually really, really cool to add new features and things that I request. And uh, as I get a little more use for this and I give them some feedback, then they will uh, they'll probably add more stuff for us here. Uh, it comes with this nice little XT60 to XT30 adapter. This is perfect if you're charging smaller batteries. Uh, I use these 4S pizza packs on my Grinderino, and they plug right in like that. Uh, it's got um, the 6S balance lead that's universal, so you can plug in uh, any size battery balance lead that you need, 2S to 6S. Uh, keep in mind to always plug in on the side that says negative. So don't plug it in over here. You want to come in this way. I like the way Hoda labels these because it actually has the one, two, three, four, five, six listed there. And that also helps reinforce to me which, which way, direction to go when I'm plugging these in. You can always plug it in wrong. If I just plug it in wrong. And then go to uh, here, you'll see cells one and two are dead and five and six are full so that's not right and then you plug it in the right way there you go uh once you've got a battery plugged in all you're going to do is click on it and select your modes uh this does have a full feature of different types of modes you can use it as a voltage power supply which is super handy uh, regular charging discharging storage balance and even a regenerative discharge where it'll take the juice out of this pack and put it into your source battery, which is pretty neat. Um, you know, especially if you've got a big bank like this, uh, if you're draining your packs that you didn't fly, you can put them right back into the bank. Uh, so we're going to go back to charge, uh, type of battery, 
This is a LiPo. Uh, let me just show you all the types. It's got lithium high volt, smart battery, Lion, lithium fire, phos, lithium iron, uh, all the different Lion types, uh, nickel, zinc, lead, NICAD, NIM, Aniloop, all sorts of stuff here. Again, this, uh, the other mode where you can just do power delivery is super useful as well, but we're just going to be charging LiPos. Uh, this is a 4S, so we're just going to select 4S, and it is a 600 ma, so we're going to charge it at 0.6. And there it goes, it's charging. Uh, if you click on here, it's going to give you a resistance test. Uh, it's going to have to charge some to show a difference in the charge in order to give you the details of the resistance test. Uh, on the next screen, it's going to give you a little bit more information. This is the voltage of the source battery. So uh, this battery is not full. I wouldn't be charging on it for very long. Also, if you were going to charge from a battery like this, you just set your input voltage to 21 volts. That way, when it gets to 21, it would stop and not over discharge your pack. Again, for the stay high, you can go all the way down to 16. Uh, this is the temperature of the unit itself. It has a probe inside. Uh, how much watt hours has been delivered and then over here is going to be the total pieces That's the total times you've charged a battery. Uh, some of my bigger hodas are, are around like 2,000 charges at this point uh, But this little beast will do it too. The fan has not kicked on yet. This is a pretty light load since it's such a small battery uh, So the fan will kick on automatically based on the load as sure as that temperature creeps up it'll come on in order to stop um but this is a pretty small battery it's not super interesting so let's just stop that and let's put on a big battery uh i know some people were asking me if this thing could actually deliver uh the full 15 amps uh so we're gonna put two big batteries on it one on either side So we normally would charge the stay high pack at six amps. So let's get it going at six amps. I do like the little buttons on here. Um, they've had like scroll wheels and touch screens and stuff and some of their other models. And the, these little buttons are very responsive and very easy to click on. I'm a fan. Uh, so it's ramping up. All the way up to six amps. And this thing usually takes like an hour and a half to charge at six amps. It's not empty though. It's close to full. There's the fan doing actual work now. Not too loud. Uh, I like the little stubs though. It can help keep it up off the, the ground a little bit. Probably still gonna suck a little dust and sand, but that's the way uh, the way of the world, I'm afraid. Um, but yeah, let's crank it. Let's see how high this thing can go. I normally recommend a max of 10 amps for this battery. That's what the manufacturer said the charge at was 10. I charge them at six. Let's see if it'll go all the way up to 10. Ten amps, no problem. And just for shits and giggles, let's go all the way to 15 amps. I want to see this thing deliver all the power. No problem. Getting up there. Well, 12.3 amps is where this battery is topping out. Now that may be related to the source battery. That's a lot of juice. So on this battery, it's doing pretty darn good. I put it on my uh, power supply on the bench. I was getting 6.9 amps off of that. 
Uh, it's going to really vary a lot based on the supply that you're feeding it with. That's what's going to determine how many amps you can deliver. So if, if you're not happy with the number you've got right here, then you need to put a bigger power supply on it. Speaking of uh, smaller power supplies, let's, uh, let's try it on my little 65 watt uh, USB-C power delivery. Let's give it a shot see what this thing can do now I can go ahead and tell you it's not going to get anywhere near 15 amps because 65 watts uh, 25 volts is not that not anywhere up there uh, but 2.4 amps is plenty for normal charging I mean if you're charging a battery like this that's more than 2c off of a 65 watt uh, USB C power delivery so you could have this running in the car and be getting 2.4 amps off the cigarette lighter. Uh, I mean, 57 watts on a 65 watt power supply, that's pretty darn good. I uh, definitely say this is gonna be a fantastic little charger for a lot of people. Um, what else should we do? Let me just unplug this battery for a second. I'll show you power delivery mode or power supply mode. So in here, you're just going to set your output voltage and um, your current. I would usually bring this number way, way down, or something like 2 amps, and then fire it up. And I've made a little XC60 to XC60 adapter that I plug in on my bench to do this. But it cranks up and it's delivering 12 volts now. And if I was to put a load on it, uh, if the, the load is less than 2 amps, this thing will crank up to, you know, 1.6 or whatever my load is. I'm testing some LEDs uh, and it'll show me what that consumption actually is for those LEDs, which is super handy. Um, and, and, but also it will current limit it. So if I have a short or something like that, it's only going to go up to two amps and then it'll cut. It won't allow it to do full meltdown. Uh, very, very handy and useful on the bench, and I like this because it's so small. I've been using some of my older pocket chargers for that very function uh, when I need like a 12-volt or I need a 5-volt supply on the bench. Uh, super, super handy. Um, what else? You know, this has got full discharge and storage. <laughs> I'm like, never use these features. I'm a fly it and drain it in the air kind of guy. Uh, regular balance mode, it's always going to balance though. In fact, if you try to plug in and charge without the balance, uh, HODAs are going to complain. They, they're not happy with you for trying to do something so dangerous. And uh, yeah, they just will be like, no, you shouldn't do that. Let's, let's try. So I plug in, no balance lead, tell it to start. And it's going to say, hey, do you really want to charge this without a balance lead? And yes, you can. It'll override and it'll charge anyway, even though it's not safe. Plug that thing in. Whoa! Now it's happy. Fire it up. And you'll see we actually have an imbalanced battery. And it's going to get to charging. Uh, very happy. Look, so the the power delivery USB is delivering 19.89 volts, almost 20 volts. I mean, you know, power delivery is made to charge like laptops and stuff. So it, it's really perfect for this. Uh, do keep in mind that your like your regular brick that you charge most average cell phones is not going to do power delivery. Uh, it needs to say PD. Uh, and they ask for 90 watts, uh, but 90 watts is just going to allow you to push more. Again, if I would crank this up, if I go up into the 3 amps or so, that'll max out this little power supply. 2.5 amps or so. So yeah, if you were up at 90, you'd probably be getting 30% uh, more than that. That's basically one more so three and a half 3.3 something around that range I'm guessing on a 90 watt power delivery but uh, that should be plenty for normal charging and if you've got big batteries like this 
then you probably want to be using a big power supply. Uh, I love this though. Super small, super portable. Definitely like uh, that this thing will just go in your backpack. I mean, it's, it's the same size as this 1100 battery. Pretty dope. Comes with the XD60 to XD30 adapter. And this is one of the nicest I've ever seen. It's all injection molded from Hoda. Uh, yeah. Check it out in the shop, flyhighfpv.com. I'm the first one in the U.S. to carry these. And I'm probably the first one to give you a walkthrough to just doing what I do. Uh, hit me up, flyhighfpv.com. All the best products in one place for your drones.